This video is one of a series. The full series provides the complete October 26, 2016 forum involving seven of the eight candidates competing in the November 8, 2016 election for three seats on the seven-member Bergen County Board of Chosen Freeholders, the county's legislative body. The forum was hosted by Bergen Grassroots, a nonpartisan, nonprofit corporation focused on keeping county residents informed about the activities of Bergen's governmental entities. Its website and this forum series are at www.bergengrassroots.org. Thank you. Now there are going to be at least three questions from the audience. Cliff, do you have them ready to give to us? Yes. Uh, We're going to trust your voice again. We have a few here that are basically on the subject of taxes, taxes, and more taxes. So I am going to thank you. I'm going to... Uh, no, I didn't turn it on. on the subject of taxes, since we're only talking about the county budget here, what specifically, it looks like the, it increased by 5% this year, uh, it's up by 18 million. How would you propose to rein in costs, and what is the proper role of county government in light of state and local government action on taxes? We start with Mr. DeDeal and move left and then come back. That you're just going to go right. All right. One of the things that we should actually look at is combining services. For example, we can consolidate the departments of public works and parks into one unit that would save hundreds of thousands of dollars for the taxpayers of Bergen County. We could also look at combining health and human services as one unit as well. One of the things that we should also ensure is that we, when we purchase items, we go out to bid, and that we get the best possible prices for the for the uh, How much time do I have? You have 90 seconds, but on the other hand, not everybody has to answer this question. If you think that what Mr. DiDio said handles it for you, you don't have to say anything. Okay. Uh, additionally, we have we should look at what other towns, municipalities, and, and counties are doing within the state to see best practices. Best practices is very important. Thank you. Fiona, do you have a call? Um, yes. I'll keep on doing uh, That's okay. I can speak without it. I think that... There are a number of issues that I think we need to address to rein in taxes. One of them that I mentioned during the budget hearings was overtime. But it's not only about uh, the day-to-day -day operation of the county, it's all about capital projects as well. Because the debt service is more than 16% of our operating budget. That's almost $86 million. So every decision that we make, when we talk about prioritizing what we want to do in the county, we have to remember we're still paying $148 million for Overpeck Park. While it is a beautiful park, it was a project that was out of control. We really need to make decisions openly, transparently, and we have to focus on what the priority of the citizens of Bergen County is. Yes. Um, yes, the last two budgets, as I understand it, were very tough budgets. Uh, the Democratic Controlled Freeholder Board had to reverse cuts, big cuts, $6.5 million worth of cuts in education, cuts to senior service services, cuts to veteran services, um, cuts to consumer protection. So that, that was a bitter pill to swallow. But I should also point out that those budgets were presented by a Republican budget chair. And the first one was voted on by the two Republicans on the board. Yes, and one, the, the last budget by one. Um, we try, you know, we are pledged to hold the line on taxes because we know that, it, you know, taxes in Bergen County and New, in New Jersey are onerous. Um, but what we're trying to do is balance the need to keep taxes in line while providing the services that are very important to our residents. Mr. Uh, Driscoll, then we're going, going right from your side. Thank you. Um, it was referred to about uh, parks and department public works. Yes, that was done under Kathy Donovan. We, we combined the parks and the public works department and we saved a director's salary, which is about 121000 That's real dollars, folks. That's your dollars. When I was on the board, I cut my salary. I was Myself and Rob Herman were the only two freeholders that cut our salary by 25%. And I can say I'm the only candidate sitting up here that never voted for a budget increase. 
on any county budget. Um, you can Google it, you can look it up, it's all factual. Um, when I was up there, we cut spending two years in a row. We were left a mess when we walked in the door, and we had to clean up a mess. I finally got across the hall and unsigned and unpaid that was owed by the county. If it wasn't paid, the county would have been sued. That's what was left to us by Dennis McNerney. Unfinished work. Then again, wasn't. I wouldn't have expected anything less. So that's what we got stuck with. So anytime power changed in any form of government, you have to clean up stuff. It's inevitable. Fortunately, it is. Ms. Ortiz. Yes, I agree, uh, Mr. Driscoll. Uh, when the Democrats took over after Kathy Donovan, uh, she wasn't forthcoming of the $5 million health increase, which had to be put in the budget in the following year. Uh, I think the Republicans were also against the realignment of the Sheriff's Office, which in the past year alone, we saved over $3 million, and we're gonna save over another $200 million in the next 25 years. And in regards, and in, in regards to uh, the debt, uh, I think it was under your administration that over a hundred million dollars in debt for the judicial center as well, and, and the DPW, which wasn't even proper bonding because they didn't even have the uh, the budget money for the access roads or the sealed floors, and even hire a construction manager. But yes, there's a lot of there's a lot that we can do with the taxes. We want to save our taxpayers money, and that's what's most important. Me for the budget. Mr. Just a quick quick on that one. The, the merger between the Sheriff's Department and the uh, Police Department did not save $3 million. The only person that lost his job was Chief Higgins. Now, long-term goal, excuse me, long-term goal, I still think it's a good idea to have merged the two because it'll save money long -term, in the long term. Um, you've listened to me spout out about making tax cuts left and right. If, there, if I let any doubt in your mind that I won't vote for a tax increase, let me know. I, I'm not big on spending money. I'm going to yield the rest of my time because you know how I feel. Thank you. I, I was unclear about that until just then. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, sorry, Mr. Speaker Sullivan. Listen, a budget is something that's not to be taken lightly. We had bipartisan support in the last two budgets. Uh, we had a unanimous vote the year before. We had a Republican chairman of the of the budget. Uh, Mr. Driscoll's right about one thing. It takes a lot of time to clean up problems of the past. When you cut six and a half million dollars from education, when you cut fit, when you cut uh, veteran services by 50 50 percent, when you cut money for special needs children, yeah, there's a lot of cleaning up to do. Yeah. Um, and Mr. Nicola talks about our debt. Well, Mr. McCall and Mr. Driscoll voted for the largest debt increase in the history of the county. The largest. So yes, we have debt services. Now, we can sit up here and, and make believe that you know we can bury our heads in the sand, but people have to make responsible budgets, and we have. We have done that, and going forward, we will continue to do that. I'm sure our future budgets are gonna be much more beneficial to the taxpayer, but you just can't come up here and say we need to reduce tax. Uh, the taxes because our debt service is too high, and vote for the highest debt service in the history of Burton County. You can't do it. I'm sorry. I mean, how can we trust them with a budget when they say stuff like that? Be upfront and be honest. You voted for it. Own it. So, this is these are the kind of things that a budget needs to, that we need to do. I mean, we cut two million dollars from spending from what the, from what was proposed to us. We sit down, we go through the budget line by line by line. We, we are responsible with it. Everyone has a chance to make their, their pitch. They want to make cuts. I didn't hear any. We sat around the table and we all had our little cuts here and there. But nothing major was proposed by anyone on this board. So to sit here and try to blame the us, it is, is really, when you just, just look at the history, it's impossible. It's impossible to get out of that, from under that. We even cut five hundred thousand dollars from special needs kids, not us, them. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Is there one other question that we can cut it down? That we're going to do these in forty-five second responses because we're going to try to get out of here about six or seven after, which would, which be, since we started seven minutes late. But what what do you have as another question? Okay, there was a reference you mentioned 
cuts in education and how it causes an opportunity or a necessity to clean things up. We have a specific question here. Were the cuts to education made by the Freeholder Board in 2011 justified? Why and why not? Why don't we, um, see, Tom, um, Freeholder Sullivan, why don't we start with you? Were they justified? I don't know. I don't think so. No, I'm not going to tell you. No, they were not justified. When you have people in this county that need to that have to, have to get an affordable education, and you balance their tuition on, on the, and you take the county takes away funding and you balance your budget on the backs of people that need it the most, no, they were not needed. You could have come up with more creative ways. Let's hear some of the creative ways. Six, five million dollars from them, and they're going to tell you it's because the president was outspending. He was doing this. He spent two hundred thousand dollars. So you cut five million dollars from the people that need it the most? Absolutely not. If anyone doesn't realize how important education is to our residents in our county, then we need to wake up because it is important. And no, there's no justify no justification to taking money from people who need to get an education and can't afford a four-year school. There's no justification for it. We certainly we certainly need to allow them a, a more a, a less expensive means to get an education. Mr. Warren. I'd like everybody here to tell me what they think and to represent this day. Does anybody here know what the dropout rate is at Burke Community College? It's over 80%. It's over 80%. Now, think about this. We're subsidizing $20 million a year plus capex going to that school. Now, that 80%, what I'd really like to do is identify, you know, do early intervention, identify them, and march them over to Tom's Union Board and get a really good paying union job. Ladies and gentlemen, college isn't for everybody. I've been subsidizing for 30 years. I'm tired of it. Thank you. Ms. Ortiz. I was the trustee at the time when the $5 million was cut, and I can tell you how devastating it was for the students. I mean, 25% increase on their tuition, that's just not justifiable in any way, shape, or form. And in regards to what you're saying of a dropout rate, that's incorrect information because we don't, no, because those are not correct because people don't go to Burn Community just for a two-year associate. A lot of them leave a year after to go to a four-year college. A lot of them go to just get a certification. A lot of them just go for job training. There's multiple multiple reasons you go to Burn Community College. It's not, not just to get a two years associate. But overall, we Burgan Community College is a gem. It's our affordable way of having a, an education that we can offer to the residents of Burgan County. And I will not let that happen again. That was horrible. I sat through it. I saw what had happened. I mean, you don't even realize how much poverty there is within our students in Burgan County, which is hard to believe. We even had to set up a food pantry. We have to give out turkeys to families. I mean, it's, 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 it's hard for them, even for their transportation. But overall, it's very important, and I will fight for the, for the future of our, of our, for the children, which is our future for the county of, uh, of Burnham. 45 seconds on the question is, again, can you justify the cut? Okay. On the cuts to special education that I hear, it kind of sticks in my craw a little bit. But if somebody, if you learn your education about special education, at that point in time, districts were bringing children back to district out of special education programs. So when you don't have full enrollment, you reduce the money given to a program. It's simple. And when the enrollment goes up, you bring the money back in. It's simple. That's the way it works. The Burke Community College, it's real easy to put it on the backs of the students as the Board of Trustees did. They went the easy way out. They didn't look at cutting in the administration or some of their luxurious travel trips they go on to Toronto or any of the other conventions they go on. They went right to the one that would break everybody's heart, to the students. Sick and tired of seeing Board of Trustees go right to the students to pay for their mismanagement of the money. And that's what happened at Burn Community College. The mismanagement of the money. You have trustees sitting on their hands up there not fighting for the students, that's something else, which is what happened when they wanted to write the vote up there. I know I was the only one fighting for the students side by side. Mr. Indio. I'm sitting here and I'm listening to all this back and forth. The facts are not being stated accurately. 
it was not a 25% increase. It was a 5% increase. That's a significant difference. The money that was taken was not really taken away from student services. It was more administrative. I was a student at Bergen Community College. I have a bachelor's in education, a master's, and also a PD administration. I support education. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not ignorant. You know what's going on. Look at your tax bills. The Democrats are saying they save tax dollars. Yet, taxes went up under Democratic control by $34 million in the last two years, which is over five times the rate of inflation. We need to be realistic. We need to look at the facts and not listen, and I'll use the word BS. Thank you. We all ready to call Thank you. Uh, my answer is yes, the cuts were justified. Uh, they were made with the county executive and the president and the college, and they were part of the budget that was presented to the freeholder board in 2011. Actually, it was over two years, so it was two and a half million dollars. And I do have the article here as well saying that tuition did rise. It, it rose 5.5%. It still was one of the most reasonable tuitions at a community college in the state of New Jersey, if not the nation. I want to say that this was during a time when county budgets were going up 8%, 10%. And we were looking into what was happening in regard to spending. Administration at the college increased 50% over that last president's tenure. 50%, and those were salaries of $145,000 or more. We're right-sizing the college now and prioritizing moving forward. Thank you. Ms. Amoroso. I don't care what they say. Bergen Community College has to be protected. And it has to be helped, has to be nurtured to grow because it is such a critical educational component for our lower income students. Not everybody lives in Northern Bergen County and uh, commutes to work as a hedge fund manager. Uh, we need Bergen County there. And, and I still say, yes, yes we, we, had, we had a lavish spender in office and he got fired. But, we have to protect the college. And the Democrats had to restore those funds. And nonetheless, the kids had to, to pay the tuition. So I do not think they were justified. Thank you.